If you are into open source AI video, then this is probably going to be one of the most exciting videos you've seen in a hot minute. Welcome back to the channel where we discuss the creative uses of AI and we do talk a lot about AI video and there are a lot of commercial solutions out there and they're amazing and getting better all the time. But a lot of us have just as much if not more attention on the open source solutions and we have covered several of them here on the channel and today we're going to revisit the Hanwan model because the last time we did a video on that, I talked about the ability to use LoRa files to customize the output of your text to video using the Hanwan model. At the time, there were really only a couple of customized models available. In that previous video, I used the Arnold Schwarzenegger model and the ALF model to demonstrate how these LoRa's work in a Comfy UI workflow. And I also said at that time that I did not know how to train a Hanwan LoRa, but I knew that in a few weeks it would probably be more readily accessible to some of us and easier to use. And if you've done any searching on how to train Hanwan Loras for video, you've probably run into the same thing I did. A lot of very complicated instructions, whether or not you're trying to run it locally or on something like a run pod with some servers on the other side, there's all of this configuration that has to be done and it was just more than I was gonna do. The software being used to train these Loras for the most part is something called Diffusion Pipe and to run that on my Windows environment, I would have had to install some sort of Linux subsystem called WSL, which is probably in my future, but it just was more than I was willing to take on. So I just sat back and I waited for technology to change. And that's where Mimic PC has come to the rescue. Mimic PC is the sponsor of this video and also a regular sponsor of the channel because they make AI tools and resources available to people who may or may not be able to afford the GPUs, the computers to run these things. Or in my situation, I've got a GPU that will run these things, but I need to be able to run several of these processes at a time or record a video while I'm using my computer. So the necessity of offloading some of these AI intensive tasks is something that I run into all the time and I use Mimic for it constantly. But just this morning, I saw that they had added Diffusion Pipe to their list of apps that we can access as a Mimic PC member. Yes, I'm going to show you how you can train your own custom Hanwan LoRa model without having to have an expensive CPU, without having to do any of the nightmare configuration you may have learned about as you've researched it like I did. You see this video on the screen here? That's not a video of Tracy at a recent function where she had some chocolate cake. No, this is a text to video generation using the Hanwan model in Comfy UI using a LoRa that I trained this afternoon on Tracy's face. It took me just a couple of hours. I'm going to break down exactly how I did it, but let me show you a few other examples of the output I was able to produce. This was actually the first test generation I did as the model was being trained. I'll explain this more in a minute, but it trained for about 40 epochs and I decided, well, I'll just test it. So I downloaded the checkpoint and ran it through my Comfy UI. Hun Wan video workflow. I originally started with the default value of 0.8 for the strength of the LoRa and it came out looking like this, but I was super excited because yes, this is on the right track. That's definitely me. The training shall continue. But while I let the training continue, I also played with some other values in the strength and got even better results. Now I know this is a little dark, but I wanted to see how it would handle if I said a man got a bloody nose. And by the way, this is the original output from the prompt and this is an upscaled version. And then on this third one, I'm running it through a set of nodes that add sound effects to it automatically based on what it's seeing in the video. This particular workflow with all of these combined is not yet available on Mimic PC, but I'm hoping to get it up there soon. Right now I'm just doing this locally and the sound effects part is totally optional. I just like it because I think it's cool. Here's another the one the prompt was a close-up of a man eating hot dogs as fast as he can at a hot dog eating contest obviously we didn't get all of those details but i was really more interested in the likeness of my face and although it's not perfect it is so on the way and it's very exciting to know that we can do this kind of thing here i prompted the model to have me playing the ukulele on the beach it didn't show a lot of my face but i see enough to know that it was me here's some other attempts i was definitely playing with values here and so it's kind of all over the map trying to find the sweet spot it's just like working with any other lore in a workflow. You're going to keep playing with that strength value till you get the likeness that you want. Here the prompt was actually playing cards with a dog on a city street during a snowstorm. I didn't have this one upscaled, but even though I'm far off there, this is still clearly based on me. Here's another one, a close-up of a man with a bumblebee on his nose. And I was so excited about the results I got with my model, I decided to go in and train one on Tracy. And when I downloaded the first 
first checkpoint I wanted to try, I loaded it into a prompt about posing in a selfie with Bigfoot, and I think that the masculinity of the Bigfoot took over Tracy a little bit and made her a male version here for this particular video. And making these two Laura models could not have been simpler. After being completely intimidated by the few videos out there on YouTube that talked about this, this was drop dead simple. I just dragged my images in and hit go. Let me show you how it works. Now inside Mimic PC, you're gonna click on add new app. And right down here, you have diffusion pipe. And this is where you're gonna choose your GPU. When I trained my own model, I used the large Pro Plus because I wanted a lot of processing power and VRAM and I was paying $1.49 an hour because I just chose not to use the bargain brand because I didn't want to risk any kind of interruptions during the training process. And when I trained Tracy's, I chose the Ultra model, which was 50 cents more an hour. But let me show you the results of that test. I can always track the costs of everything I do here. And when I trained my model on the Large Pro Plus, it took me five hours and 56 minutes, and it was $8.91 total to train that model. When I did Tracy's, I paid 50 cents more an hour for the GPU. However, it got done in about two hours and cost me $4.11. So I highly recommend going ultra when you're choosing your GPU. You'll also want to use an automatic extension or set a time here for it to automatically stop so that the machine doesn't turn off in the middle of the training. Then you'll click create and start and wait a few minutes for the machine to load up. Once the machine is started, this is your interface. You can close this area up over here for now just by clicking that icon. If you have an existing data set like I do, you can continue to train it if you stopped it for any reason by just clicking select existing data set and then from the drop down menu it will show you what you've worked on. Bob. Bob Doyle 1 and Tracy, right? In this case, we're creating a new data set. So in the case of Tracy, for example, I just said Tracy, that was the name of the model I was creating. When I clicked on create data set, it said it already exists because I have done one called Tracy. So let's call it Tracy star, and then we'll create a data set from there. Now, all it needs is the images you can just navigate to the directory where you have the images. I like to use about 20 or so. Send those up. Obviously you want variety. You want it to be in good quality, different lighting, all of those things that we've talked about a million times. And you probably already know if you have created your own models. Here you can preview all of them, make sure you got the ones you want and everything else is filled in for you. All the paths you need, all the models you, can, you need to get this going. The only thing I change here is on this row here because I know I don't need a thousand epochs, especially after after testing it, I only need like 40 or 50 of them to get a model that works well. So here, I don't need to have anything like that. I could say something like 60 epochs, and then I have them save every five. So I end up with several checkpoints along the way that I can test, and I end up testing them around 40, and then I test it again around 50. Because as they're created, they're going to end up in an outputs folder that you can check and download from. That's it. All of this other complicated stuff, it's been figured out for you. All you do now is click on start training and you wait. Clicking this icon here opens this up where you'll see file. And as these checkpoints are saved, it's going to happen in the outputs folder. So you just open up the outputs folder. You would go to the folder that you're working on. In this case, it would be Tracy star. I did not start training this time, but before it would be Tracy. And then there's a date time stamped folder there. All the epochs are saved in their own folders. Like I said, five at a time. So let's say I wanted to check it at 45 and I'd open up the Epoch 45 folder. The one you're looking for to download is the safe tensor file here. I generally rename it first to something that I recognize. Like in this case, I would rename it to Tracy 45 Epoch so I know what version of the checkpoint it is. And then I download that file and then I just put it in the Laura's folder inside my models folder of Comfy UI. That's really all there is to creating it. Then it's about testing it. If you don't have a testing ground, if you don't have a Comfy UI installation, of course, you're right here on Mimic PC and they have several workflows for running Hanwan videos. And the workflow you use will be designed differently than this one because this I designed custom for me and my needs. But there's going to be an area where you're loading your various models, the Hanwan video models. In my case, I'm using the distilled FP8 model with the fast video Laura to speed things up and do this in what I use is about 10 or 11 steps. I think 11 steps here instead of the 20 or 30 you might normally do. It just speeds things up a little but make no mistake, this is not a super fast process. Each of those videos with everything, the processing, the upscaling, and adding the sound effects takes about five minutes. And I am setting those at a 320 by 576 resolution, which isn't the smallest I've seen. It's not the largest I've seen either. But with the upscale nodes here, we get a pretty good result, and you definitely save time. Once you have your basic Hanwan video loaded, now it's time to add the LoRa's. And I actually have, as I said, several of them. I've got the fast video LoRa, which allows for the faster rendering times and fewer steps. And I have, in this case, the trace 
RAC 50 epochs checkpoint that I saved out and got these results here. I'm running 101 frames on my 3090 and as I said these things take about five minutes to go through the entire process from beginning to end. This does add a minute or two so if you just want to create that initial video then you can certainly do that and shave time off of it. I just like the results of running it through the subscaler because it also does some interpolation and makes it just look a lot smoother and more realistic. I want to show you just a few more examples but first I want to address that in addition to training images you can also train videos. So if there's certain motions or movements that you want to be able to tell the model to do in a fluid way, perhaps they're unique in some way, you can upload videos as well as images, but it adds a tremendous amount of time to the training. For my purposes, I was mostly interested in seeing if I could put a face in there. It works fantastically. It cost a couple of bucks to do. I'm sure that cost will come down as it gets easier to do maybe on your own local system without so much configuration and resource intensive needs. A few more examples and I'll let you go play. So this this was another early test of just be, the, the prompt was actually that I was working the drive through window handing food out. But again, my excitement is more about the fact that it got the likeness reasonably well. This again, an early test with 40 epochs at about 1.1 strength or something like that. I know this was with the 40 epoch version. And then what I wanted to do was load in the 50 epoch version and see how different it was. And so if they go run right after the other, this was actually the 50 epoch version. I think the likeness is better on the other one. Although I do believe that I compensated with the 50 epoch version. I think the, when I did the 40 epoch version, I was doing it at a strength of about 1.3 to get that, that result with the glasses. And so I dialed it down a little bit, assuming that it would be stronger and the lightness isn't quite as strong on that one. Here the prompt was to have me sitting on the sidewalk in the rain. You can kind of see rain down here and crying because I wanted to see what it would do with those emotions. Not a lot of detail on there, but you can see I'm upset about something, but the lightness is good. This one, it was like a 70s, a guy dances for 70s disco. The prompt adherence was perfect. It's just the lightness is hard to tell because I got glasses and the crazy hair and it's so far off in the distance. Here I had it tell me to play the uke and this was a pass that I did not run through the interpolation or maybe even the upscaler. So it's kind of rough around the edges, but I just wanted to see what it would do if I asked it to have me play ukulele on the beach. Here's a prompt to have Tracy eating a candy cane in a red sequin dress. I think I actually had the strength up a little too much. It's showing signs here around the edges of being too strong. And this is another one, but the likeness on this one is probably in real life, one of the best there is, even though we don't see the candy cane at all in this particular prompt. That's why I think I had the strength up too high, but the likeness is really good. So I will leave a direct link to an instance of diffusion pipe that you can just click in the description below and it will take you right there. If you have a Mimic PC account already, you're good to go. And if not, it's free to set up an account. And then we've got some sales going on for storage to compute time and things like that that you can check out on your own. Overall though, if you don't have a GPU or you don't want to go through that mind numbing configuration process that I've seen so many times, then this is a great way for just a few dollars and a little bit of your time to try this out. Because obviously being able to inject your own stuff into your text to video generations in a high quality model like Hanwan and where it's going is going to be a superpower moving forward, especially if you're tired of paying for paid subscriptions for those types of abilities. If if these are the types of things you'd like to learn more about, well, I suggest that you immediately subscribe to this channel because this is the kind of thing we talk about all the time. If you subscribe now, I will not look for you. I will not pursue you. But if you do not, I will look for you. I will find you. And I will.